Hello, welcome back to Brass Gaming, and today it's me, Esmond, and today I also have on... Hey, it me, Drew. I am now replacing Christian from here on out. That is a lie. <laughs> I am just here for a special episode. <laughs> that is right. We have a very special episode that we would like to call Brass Jank. So, today we're going to be talking about one of Drew's decks. W would you like to give us a little bit of a history background on your deck? Oh my, this is the deck that uh, got me uh, uh, hardcore into Magic. Um, I've had this deck for like maybe like 2014, 2015. Okay. It's a very old deck. I've been kind wow. of like messing around with it throughout the years. I love this deck, but we are going to be talking about uh, Arcanus the Omnipotent. Mm, awesome. And just like to encourage the audience to like share subscribe and comment as always the support means a lot to us and a lot to our growth so tell us a little bit about our, our about your commander all right well to start off uh with arcanus um he is um a six drop uh three blue three colorless mm -hmm. and um his um abilities are um when he um when you, if you tap him you draw three cards okay. and he also has a secondary ability two colorless um two blue and you get to return it to uh the owner's hand oh nice yeah so um he is very he is very expensive but he also has a bit of uh self a uh, bit of uh self uh protection if uh he gets uh targeted down mm -hmm. but um that is the um commander in a nutshell basically what you'll be doing is just draw just draw. nothing nothing <laughs> nothing else um slash maybe a little bit of counters but just your main thing is you win through drawing. The best, that's it. best three <laughs> words, draw a card, and it's on most of these cards, right? Yes, uh, most of the cards are um, either mm -hmm. either um, ramping to get your uh, uh, ramping to get uh, your bigger enchantments, um, champs that give you draw, cards mm -hmm. that give you draw, and and everything that it just says, hey, you draw a card. <laughs> awesome. So so why, why don't you cover the. Our first section called unlimited hand size. All right. Well, yeah. Since you've been since you'll be drawing a lot, um, you're gonna need uh, plenty of cards that give you unlimited hand size. Uh, the three uh, more important cards that you're gonna be um, uh, getting is the first things first, uh, Library of Lang. Mm. It is a one colorless drop. It's an artifact. Um, skip your discard phase, which Ooh. essentially gives you just de facto unlimited hand size. Mm. But the nice part about it is, is um, whenever you, whenever a spell or an effect forces you to discard a card, you may instead discard that card to the top of your library. Now Ooh. this prevents any sort of uh, decks in a pod that is focused around um, mass discarding. So you can mm -hmm. like pick and choose which one you want to go into your graveyard and which one you want to keep on top of your deck for later. Because if you're, if you're still going, uh, mm -hmm. you're going to be drawing that card and then some okay uh anyway so i really i really like this card in this deck sounds sweet and whenever i see it in an opening hand i'm like yeah this is gonna be a good game <laughs> uh next one to help with your uh ramp and and uh, also with the unlimited hand size uh thought vessel mm. um pretty standard in most decks that rely on you getting a big hand state uh you have no maximum hand size and you tap Tap it to add one colorless to your mana pool, so it, it gives you um, gives you more variety um, in terms of like you put it down. Yeah, now you have um, extra mana to work with and unlimited hand size. That's awesome. One of my favorite unlimited hand size cards, though, in this deck is uh, Vencer's Journal. Mm -hmm. uh, five drop colorless. Uh, you have no maximum hand size, but the but the good thing about it is, um, at the beginning of your upkeep, you gain one life for each card in, in your hand. That's really sweet. Yeah, so, um, so when you have, like, a really big hand, um, you still, like, get all of that life back, so you have, a, so you can still, like, tank anything if you're, like, getting, like, really hard focused, mm -hmm. and hard focused in the pod, um, but, um... Of course, commander commander damage is the thing. Like if, if no, uh, definitely. Pa if Paco's coming at you, yeah, there's no saving you there. There's no but, saving. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but uh, yeah, I really I really um like this card. that gives you like a little leeway, and if you want, maybe like put in a <laughs> Etherflux Reservoir in there. Ah, uh, yes. But that's but that's not on the. But that's not really like a must need must have card for this deck. <laughs> yeah, well, that's awesome, and. Next, we're going to be covering enchantments that draw you cards. 
Mm-hmm. So the first one is the good old, the all famous Ristic Study. Yes. For two generic and a blue mana, it is a enchantment. And it reads, whenever an opponent plays a spell, you may draw a card, unless that player pays one. So you get the famous, would you like to pay one? <laughs> oh, wait, would you like to pay one? And after that, would you like to pay hey. one? Hey, always hey, stop. All, always great and just always valuable. Even sometimes draw. sometimes late game, it can be really good as well. They're tapping out for big spells. And this one is especially powerful, in my opinion, is Dictate of Crufix. Mm. For one generic blue, blue mana, it is enchantment and it has flash. At the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws an additional card. I so what, The reason why I say that I really like this card is because it has flash. It's not like how like mine, you have to play it out and then everyone gets card advantage. No, you can get card advantage first, which is always great. Getting card advantage is it's right there. <laughs> <laughs> And we also have Monastery Siege, two generic and a blue enchantment. As Monastery Siege enters the battlefield, choose cons or dragons. Cons reading at the beginning of your draw step, draw an additional card, then discard a card. Awesome. And then another one saying dragons, spells your opponents cast that target you are permanent. You control, cost two more to cast, which is really nice, especially like if you're trying to like draw more cards or maybe you just need more protection from yourself because you're getting targeted in a group, then just choose dragons and mm-hmm. makes it a little more troublesome to target you. And then finally we have Mind Unbound for generic blue blue mana for a enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a lore counter on Mind Unbound, then draw a card for each lore counter on Mind Unbound. So, at first, sure, you're going to be drawing one card, but mm-hmm. then it goes two, and then three, and then four, and then it just becomes really powerful. Yeah. yeah. It, it might be a super late game card, and for uh, most, um, for in most scenarios, we're probably not going to get get that far, but it's, mm-hmm. I really, I really like playing that because it's a really nice way, like, if it, if it, someone's actually, like, trying to stall a game, like, outright, that, that card really comes in handy uh when it just gets exponentially better and better <laughs> mm-hmm, definitely and so the next the next uh topic we're going to talk about is counter spells it ain't a mana blue mm-hmm. deck without counter spells <laughs> exactly and as you know i love my counter spells they're great <laughs> <laughs> so the first one i really like is thassa's intervention for x blue blue it is a instant it says choose one Look at the top X cards of your library, put up to two of them into your hand, and put the rest on the bottom of your library in any in a random order. Then the second mode is to counter a target spell unless its controller pays twice X. So really cool, especially if they're if they don't have a lot of mana, you can just be like, nah, you're not casting that because you don't have enough mana. Or, uh, and and they can yeah. dig you. Yeah, I'll obviously a lot of flexibility, like do I wanna draw now or do I wanna counter now? Definitely. And next one is good old Dissolve. For a colorless blue blue, it is an instant counter target spell scry one. So it costs one more than counter spell, but at the same time, it gets you to scry, which is really awesome. Now, this next one. <sighs> you have to do it. It's a bad counter spell. You have to do it's it. It's a bad counter spell. <laughs> Force well, it's three generic blue blue counter target spell. It's bad. It's just bad. <laughs> Why play counter? Why play? <laughs> it's, it's, it's not like it's a staple in no. most competitive blue No, decks. but but it is an instant and it says you may pay one life and exile a blue card from your hand rather than pay the spell's mana cost. So really awesome counter spell in in actuality. As long as you have a blue card and one life, which I think in this deck is not a problem. But wait, I thought this was jank. Well, yeah, but you have to have so- have some sort of like really high power card in your deck in order to like have it consistently work. You know, just no, random. definitely. Uh, a th- major thing with my commander decks is there's always one card that just ups the price exponentially. Yeah, right. <laughs> while the rest of the cards are like norm- like mid to low prices. Definitely. <laughs> That's how I like to play jank. <laughs> <laughs> so next we have another one of my favorites, but Drew, tell me about the infinite combo in this deck. All right. Well, this deck has just one infinite combo. Okay. That, and... You might be getting it consistently with the way that like it's just like draw, draw, draw. You'll mm-hmm. eventually uh, get to it. But one card that makes this uh, deck really nice is uh, Mind Over Matter. Mm-hmm. It is a another six drop, uh, two colorless, four blue. 
and um, it's an enchantment. You choose and discard a card, and you get to tap or untap target artifact, creature, or land. So the way that the um, infinite combo works is that um, usually I like to have Arcanus out first, mm -hmm. and then so uh, so I I'll be able to tap tap him down, and, mm -hmm. and then you play Mind Over Matter. So now you get to discard, untap Arcanus, draw three cards, and then discard another card. And if you have Library Lang, you just discard the top of your deck, mm -hmm. and you just just unlimited discarding and keep drawing. You'll move th burn through your entire deck. Oh, nice. Okay. And but that will come in, but that infinite combo will come into play later. But now we're just talking about how to get to that point, which <laughs> is the mono ramp now when it now blue and mono ramp don't really mix but there are a lot of uh, good uh artifacts that help you get there so. yeah so the first one is sapphire medallion you got two generic for an artifact and blue spells cost one less to cast so just basic run of the mill it's great it it, it, it reduces all your spells in the deck yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then next which i like is jace's sanctum for three generic and a blue, it is a, another enchantment. Instant and sorcery spells cast one less to cast. And then it also states whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, scry one. So really nice card and, and it has some nice payoff as you're casting those spells that are reduced. So since you're drawing lots of cards, you're also obviously playing a lot of instants and sorceries to mm -hmm. draw those cards for the most part. So why not scry a little and reduce the spells? It's it's a really cool card. Yeah. And then we have Thran Dynamo. For four generic, it is a artifact. Uh, tap, add three generic to your mana pool. So it helps you cast Arcanus faster, helps you mm -hmm. cast Mind Over Matter faster. So just a really good piece of ramp in this deck. Yep. And there are also some cards that I personally like to add uh, in this deck um, for a little bit of uh, extra spice. Mm -hmm. There's two specific cards I want to talk about. The first card I want to talk about is um, Polymorpher's Jest. Mm -hmm. Now, with the ability that it has, um, it's just one colorless, uh, two blue as an instant. Until the end of your turn, each creature target player controls loses all abilities and becomes a blue frog with base, power, and toughness um, with a uh, 1-1. One, one. <laughs> now on the surface th this card doesn't the start card doesn't seem that powerful but i could not tell you how many times i was saved by this particular instant really yes because um most most good cards like bank off their um effects mm -hmm. so so uh, no normally if i would die to that effect and that turn okay they're all frogs now they're all they're all just Dang. frogs now and i'll just tank the damage and you would think this card would not be um, that good, but I've been saved more often than not with <laughs> this with this card because people don't expect it. That's crazy. I've I, I've actually never seen that card played M myself. That's awesome though. I love no, it. no, it's like something you never never really think about until you're like, wait, this could possibly save me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, another card that I really like to play is this card is very close to my heart. I love this card. Um, I affectionately call this Squid Mama, and it is Chasm Skulker. Mm -hmm. uh, two generic, one one blue. Um, it is a creature, Squid Horror. Whenever whenever you draw a card, uh, put a plus one, plus one counter on Chasm Skulker. So as you keep drawing the cards, mm -hmm. this will get exponentially bigger and bigger and bigger with the mm -hmm. plus one, plus one counters. But the second, the but the other part of the card, which I like a lot when chasm skulker dies put x one one blue squid creature tokens with island walk onto the battlefield where x is the number of plus one plus one counters mm. on chasm skulker so it doesn't really matter if um you get chasm skulker big enough and someone just and it gets destroyed you just get all like an army of one one so army of squids army of squids that's, that's why I, that's why i call call her squid mama <laughs> <laughs> it's it's absolutely fantastic. What um, I it hasn't really gotten to that point in which she it either gets like destroyed like immediately or it gets mm -hmm. so big like it can't really like get destroyed and I just like swing with it. But I absolutely personally love this card even though it's not really that strong. But I it is definitely a fun card. But it's, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> definitely. So what are some of the win conditions I see you have in here? Okay, so there are 
four win. There are technically uh, three win conditions. Uh, four to actually like just get you to that point. Uh, first things first. Standard. Um, a standard card like um, big pick. Um, Lab Joy Maniac. Two colorless. One blue. Uh, if you would draw a card while your library has no cards in it, you win the game instead. Mm. So you get to that point where you play, play Lab Lab Maniac. Just keep drawing, drawing. Oh, I'm out. And I win the and win the game. Nice. Uh, next one, similar. Thassa's Oracle, more recent. Um, mm -hmm. Two blue, uh, creature Merfolk Wizard. Um, when Thassa's Oracle enters the battlefield, look at the top X cards of your library, where X is your devotion to blue. And if you have Arcanus and Mind Over Matter, that's automatically seven devotion. Ooh, okay. So, um, and put up to one of them on top of your library and the rest on the bottom of the library in a random order. If X is greater than or equal to the number of cards in your library, you win the game. That's love that card. So <laughs> yeah, it's it's <laughs> fantastic. Um but if but if for whatever reason you don't really um get to these two or they just get destroyed and you don't have really any counter mm -hmm. counter spells um to block them, you always have the alternative, uh Psychosis Crawler. Ooh. Five colorless Psychosis Crawler's power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in your hand. Mm -hmm. Whenever you draw a card, each opponent loses one life. Although, with um, the amount of cards that you get, you just like draw. So it, like it's it's like what? It's a slow burn, right? Mm -hmm. But one card that I really like to play when this card is out of the field, I love this card so much. Enter the Infinite. Ooh. Eight colorless. Four blue for a total cost of 12. So you have to be really deep in uh, into the game in order to get this card off. But mm -hmm. when you pull it off, it's so satisfying. And I have pulled it off, and it is so satisfying. All right. So enter the infinite. What you do is you draw cards equal to the number of cards in your library. Mm -hmm. Then put a card from your hand onto the top of the library. You have no maximum hand size until your next turn. So you have Ooh. all but one card in your deck now. Wow. So... Um, if you have Psychosis Crawler out, that just knocks everyone out. No matter no matter how much, at that point in the game, no matter how much life they have, that's usually, like, they're dead. For the most part, yeah. And even if they're not dead, um, you have your entire deck, so you have, like, most of your answers in the deck. And if you're at this point, you more than likely have a Nikitha Shrine to Nyx mm -hmm. uh, out there, which I do run in the deck. And um, so your devotions already, like, offsets everything. So mm -hmm. you have... You would have most of your protection in your hand in order to protect your combo. So all you do is like just okay, just play a brainstorm and win. <laughs> nice. That sounds awesome. So with, with all this being said and done, th here's a real question: What is the power level of this deck? Okay. Um, as a resident jank player, I wouldn't consider <laughs> this uh, too powerful. Um, a a six maybe in pods if people know what what you're if people know what you're doing and mm -hmm. more than likely um they will know what you're doing uh they'll target you early and just take you out of the game right um but you know i've noticed in a 1v1 setting this this deck is a bit stronger so maybe okay. like uh maybe like a seven um uh maybe um i did actually win um a local game store um 1v1 commander mm -hmm. a tournament with this deck mm. so it so um I was not expecting to win either, so well, that's, well, that's, that's the best awesome. time. You got bragging rights on that. Hey, it, <laughs> hey it's local, so I can't, <laughs> I can't really um, say to it. But yeah, th uh, this deck can, uh, is um, really good. I love running it. It's so much fun to me. So awesome. Well, that's gonna be it for our episode today. Our, our you can follow our channel on Twitter at Real Brass Gaming, and you can follow me on Twitter at ESPN underscore 1926 and then Drew and you can follow me uh, at uh, neighbor underscore gamer one um, on Twitter when I actually don't tweet at all <laughs> <laughs> it's okay I gotta start tweeting more I'm not not so savvy in it but we'll get there we'll get there we'll get there <laughs> <laughs> well th that's all today for Brass Gaming Podcast I'm Espen and I'm Drew and we'll see you next time Bye bye, -bye.